Hello, I'm Betty Hollister, Public Information Manager with the Regional Flood Control District, and welcome to another edition of the Flood Channel. While construction has slowed down because of the economy, at the Flood Control District, construction is booming. In fact, we'll have more projects underway than ever before. So with every shovel of dirt, pouring of concrete, rumbling of heavy machinery, and bulldozing of earth, there's a good chance it's a detention basin, channel, or storm drain being built to minimize the flood risk for you and your family. Carrie Ann starts our show by digging up the dirt on construction. I've got my hard hat in hand and I'm ready to build this story. Like Betty said, the district has a record number of flood control projects moving towards construction. Over the next few months, nearly 30 projects will be moving forward at a cost of nearly $250 million. So let's take a look at our map and get to our first construction location. Our first stop is the Horse Drive Interchange near US 95 in Durango. The district is working with RTC to build the channel in conjunction with our US 95 widening project. City Councilman Steve Ross knows not only are these joint projects important to protect the community, but they also put locals to work and demonstrate cooperation among government agencies. At a time when our state is looking at 13% unemployment, the Regional Flood Control District moving forward with 30 projects at this time, uh, and those projects should be done you know, within the next year, year and a half. That's quite significant, especially since we usually only do about 10 projects a year. We have a golden opportunity right now to help stimulate our own economy with our own stimulus package. So as we have the opportunity to employ upwards of 2,000, 3,000 construction workers, that's very significant considering construction is the, is the number two industry in the state of Nevada. So that's a great thing. It's the horse interchange, which is uh a multi, $43 million multi-agency project. You include the city of Las Vegas as the lead, you've got NDOT, Federal Highways, RTC of Southern Nevada, as well as the Clark County Regional Flood Control District. The project is basically an interchange bridge over US 95, it includes bridges, lighting, roadway improvements, uh, landscaping, some small infrastructure, as well as approximately one mile of Clark County Regional Flood, flood Control Master Plan facility located on the west side, which is roughly about 15% of the overall construction cost. Having the opportunity to serve as a city councilman in the city of Las Vegas has also given me the opportunity to see how important it is to work closely with other agencies throughout this valley. It is the best way for us to spend taxpayer dollars. When we're doing these projects and we do it collectively, whether the city, the county, the regional flood control, regional transportation, the, uh, the Department of Transportation, you name it, when we work together on these projects, it minimizes how it affects us as commuters and in our neighborhoods. And we work together to get several projects done at the same time. To, it, today especially, with the state uh, being hammered with revenue, our consolidated revenue tax, every county and every city in the states is dealing with this right now. If we can stretch that taxpayer dollar, we're going to do that. And we do that by working together with other government agencies throughout the state of Nevada. It really shows with everybody working together and the dialogue of communication that you can get projects like this with multi-jurisdiction and multi-funding sources built. Well, a great thing that has happened, of course, uh, a great thing, unfortunately this has happened, but it still is a great thing, the Build America bonds. Um, we had the opportunity to secure $150 million and a low interest rate because of this. So uh, through the Obama administration and the stimulus package, we're moving forward with that and it's giving us the opportunity to get these projects done, to employ people and to help our economy the best we can and to protect lives in, in the Las Vegas Valley. Most of the water comes from the, the mountains to the west, flows easterly and it's intercepted along 95 with culverts, inlets that gets into the storm string. It's a very large area, it's over a mile in this area. A lot of flows plan in the area, intercepts and protects the people downstream. It's, it's a cog in the overall system, so once the overall system's in place, this works hand in hand with it. You know, we've got great lawmakers in Carson City. We've got a, a great congressional delegation that represents us in Washington, D.C. But this is where the work gets done. This is where the rubber hits the road for me. Uh, being a city councilman, this is where I get to interact with the people in my community uh, and, and find out what, what really affects their, their lives and what I can do to make a difference in their lives. Our projects with the Regional Flood Control District do exactly that. Uh, a lot of people may not see it, but we are affecting their quality of life. And when I, as a city council member, can make your life better than I've done my job as your councilman. I think it's, a, it's very exciting because I started here when the Flood Control District was barely two years old. 
I've been here 24, 23 years. I've seen it from when it was just drawn on paper to see approximately 50% of the facilities being constructed. Flooding that we used to see, we don't see anymore. Uh, the big thing about flood control is protecting people, property, uh, those types of things. It's a big part of it. You've seen the impact. The next stop on our construction tour is the Northeast C1 Detention Basin. That's in the far southeast part of the valley. The project is more than halfway done and District Engineer Jill Riley has been following it every step of the way. Well, it's a detention basin, a collector channel, and an outfall. So it's a, a large project in both the area that it covers and protects, and um, it's about a $13 million project. The collector channel is at the upstream. It's along the foothills of the river mountains. And so anything falling off the river mountains is going to collect in this channel and then be directed into the detention basin where it's detained. And then uh, the outfall takes it into an existing major channel called the C1 channel. Well, if you look at just the finished product, um, and during a 100-year event, the pool will cover about 14 and a half acres of land. And the pool itself in a 100-year event will be at the deepest 32 feet deep. So it's, it's a lot of water that this basin is holding back. I think one of the advantages of, of this job at the Flood Control District is that we work with every entity, and they have different specific guidelines that they, in addition to our own almost every consultant in the valley and they have all these ideas that they bring to the table and so we get to learn from them and then give them the commonality of it of every all the projects that we've seen constructed and what's gone right what's been more difficult to to maneuver in the field and so it's it's exciting for me because we see it from design to completion we see it in our own backyard this, this job in particular is, is just fantastic because of that. I mean, whenever I'm flying in or out of the valley, I'm looking at where the detention basins are, where the channels are, and this particular project is going to take people out of the floodplain. So it, it's just a, a win-win situation. These planned construction projects will create between two and 3,000 jobs for local residents. Right now, the district has 13 projects under construction. Each of these are vital parts of the district's master plan and will be a giant leap forward for flood protection. Um, you know, with the economy as it is today, uh, there's, it's hard to find something positive to say about the economy. Um, but one good thing about the economy is that we're seeing really good bid prices on our projects. Um, in 2007, we averaged about eight bidders per project. In 2008, that went up to 13 bidders, and in 2009, we're up to 17 bidders per project. And all that competition um, lowers our bid prices and allows us to get more work out onto the street. With the competitive bids that we've been getting in this current bidding climate, uh, we're able to stretch our, our flood control dollars even further. And the great thing is, in June, we sold $150 million in bonds, uh, Build America bonds, through the economic stimulus package. And, Initially, we were going to build about nine projects with that $150 million, and with the good bids that we're seeing, we can stretch that from nine projects to 10 or 11 or 12 projects and get more, more projects in the ground for, for less money. Uh, the 13 projects under construction include Centennial Parkway Channel, Northeast C1 Detention Basin and Outfall, Pittman Railroad East Conveyance, Equestrian Tributary Phase 1, Black Ridge Storm Drain, Horse Drive Interchange, Las Vegas Wash, Jones, Elkhorn to Farm, Las Vegas Wash, Decatur, Elkhorn to Farm, Oakey Drain, Birch to Kalen, Freeway Channel Phase 1, Alta Parallel, Bootleg Canyon Phase 1, and Grand Teton Overpass. Uh, we have one project that's currently out to bid. That's the Las Vegas Wash, Rainbow, Elkhorn to Grand Teton project. Uh, we have five projects that have already bid and are in the award phase or are about to start construction. Those are the Flamingo Wash, Eastern to Desert Inn, the Tropicana Parkway Channel East, McDonald Ranch Channel, Oakey Meadows, and Duck Creek Railroad Detention Basin. And there are 12 projects that are going to be advertising soon. They're in the final stages of design and are going through purchasing at the local entities to, to go to advertise. Uh, the 13 projects, we're talking $124 million. Um, the five projects that are about to go uh, to construction is about $38 million. 
Um, the one project out to bid we're estimating at $19 million, and then the 13 projects that are getting it starts uh, about $130 million. It is a lot of projects going on at one time. Uh, it's a really exciting time to be working at the Flood Control District because our mission is to provide flood protection for the community, and to that end, we're, we build these facilities, we get them off the drawing board and out into construction, and that provides the benefit for the community. We've uh, built to date about 500 miles of conveyance, either channels or reinforced concrete box culverts and also 82 detention basins. And these 30 projects are really gonna add to those totals and help us achieve our vision of, uh, of constructing the master plan. And that's just two of the 13 flood control projects currently under construction. This construction boom is a big bonus for Clark County. We're helping the local economy and working to minimize the flood risk in the community. Betty, as you can see, our construction program is going strong. Thanks, Carrie Ann. Coming up next in the Flood Channel, we'll bring you up to date on this year's Billboard contest that brought in more than 1,800 entries. What were the winning messages? We'll find out right after the break. I want to show you some pictures your parents probably wouldn't want you to see. Pictures of parents making big mistakes. Here's someone's dad doing something foolish. He's actually trying to drive through a flooded street. Here's another. And another. Every summer we get flash floods. And every summer the same thing happens. And hey, if all this water can do this to a car, imagine what it'd do to a kid. Look, don't be foolish. Flash floods kill. Tell your parents. A reminder from the Clark County Regional Flood Control District. Don't press your luck. Steer clear of flood water. Hi, I'm Jill Riley, Principal Civil Engineer with the Regional Flood Control District, and you're watching the Flood Channel. Driving around town, we hope you've seen some of our billboards with those clever flood safety messages. But where do we come up with all those good warnings? We ask you, the residents, to send us your ideas through a billboard contest. Carrie Ann announces this year's winners. Too deep for you? Bad gamble? You know better. All these billboards have been posted around town to remind you not to drive through flood water. Every year, the district holds a contest in search of the next potential billboard. This year, more than 1,800 slogans were entered. After a lot of careful consideration, Pays to Wait was chosen as the winner. We're near the corner of Charleston and Casino Center, where the winning billboard will be posted. Well, actually, the, the idea originated probably about eight years or so ago, uh, and it all has to do with the idea that people don't really respond well to being told what to do. And so we came up with, a, with an idea, let's, let's face it, when people are thinking about driving into a flooded area, they're in their car, and so we came up with the idea for a license plate slogan uh, as, as the communication of our messaging. We do a contest, we've been doing a contest for a number of years, and it's grown 800% since the inception of the contest, as a matter of fact. I got an email um, through work that this contest was going on, and I thought it was a really good idea, and I love brain teasers. And I also had an experience when I was growing up in Chicago. I went through uh, the Des Plaines River when it was flooding, and it wasn't a smart idea. And putting the letters and numbers together, it brought me back to that time when I was going through floodwaters, and I was so fearful, and I was hoping that maybe if I got my message out, other people would realize that it's not a smart thing to do. Floodwaters are very strong. It's, it's extremely dangerous. With emergency personnel and your car being damaged, the most important thing is what it pays to go through for your own personal safety. It's just not worth it. I was by myself, but if you have children in your car, elderly, you're carrying other people, the best thing to do is to wait. Your personal safety is so important. Floodwaters are strong. It was important to outreach uh, for the Spanish community so that they would create their own messages, something that would resonate with them so that they can be properly educated and that awareness is properly raised in that community. Besides the, the, the overall cultural differences, the, the linguistic differences uh, are very important and especially being license plates where our, the messages contain 
contained in a lot of very few symbols. It's a little bit different when it comes to Spanish and English. Um, English tends to be a language that likes a lot of acronyms and abbreviations, whereas Spanish, they do exist, but they tend to be more formalized. It does present a challenge for the Spanish language participants, and we did notice that they entered um, just more words than, than actual abbreviations. Oh, I saw the billboards in and, and the freeway. Um, I also get some information at the internet and we were counting the letters and everything that way we can be right and that this no flota is so clear to understand oh, I'm so happy <laughs> yeah, actually it's close to my house oh wow that's amazing <laughs> yeah that's a really nice experience for me it's really very gratifying because, you know, uh, one of the things we're trying to do is is reduce the number of people who get hurt in, in a flood situation, and that actually has also gone down in the number of years since the campaign originated. People don't realize it till, till they're actually in it. Hopefully, hopefully they will never have to experience what I experienced. If my message can go out there and change one person, then I know I did my job, and I'm, I'm very honored that it's uh, my little saying there will hopefully stick in somebody's mind and they'll remember to turn around. It's not worth it. This is the third year the district has held a Spanish version of the contest and it too continues to grow every year. Out of nearly 120 entries, no flota, which means doesn't float, will be posted with previous winners, H2O Aki and No Bueno. Typically the contest runs for three weeks starting the 1st of July. Betty? Thanks, Carrie Ann, and a huge thank you to the residents who took the time to send us your ideas. Coming up next, we'll go to the Clark County Wetlands Park and learn more about this environmental gem. See that clogged storm drain? Something like that, when it rains, will cause water to back up and flood our streets. Hello, Regional Flood Control District. I'd like to report a clogged storm drain. City and county employees are working hard to keep your storm drains clean. If you spot a clogged storm drain, call and report it. Help protect the environment by keeping our drains and washes clean. Report clogged storm drains by calling 685-0000. Don't press your luck. Steer clear of flood water. Hi, I'm Deborah March, City Councilwoman for Ward 2 for the City of Henderson, and you're watching the Flood Channel. Welcome back to the Flood Channel. The Clark County Wetlands Park on the eastern edge of the valley borders both sides of the Las Vegas Wash. Carrie Ann tells us more about this oasis in the desert. The Wetlands Park is the valley's largest open space, with more than 2,900 acres of native plants and animals approximately 212 species of birds and more than 70 different types of native plants and animals all call the Wetlands Park home. The park's main purpose is to reduce the environmental impact of stormwater and wastewater runoff. The park uses water flow control features such as dams and ponds to slow down the flow, catching silt and helping to purify the water. The district played a big part in the park's latest improvements. Mitigation banks and wetlands in lieu fee programs are, are similar programs that are designed to create, restore, enhance, and protect wetlands and other non-wetland waters of the United States so that the nation's water supply isn't degraded. The Wetlands Park is about 2,900 acres of open space and encompasses many different habitats, including riparian, which is the Las Vegas wash that runs right through the park and that's that green ribbon that goes along that wash. And that Las Vegas wash is the drainage for the entire valley, takes all of that water that's been treated and also that runs off of our lawns or flows from storms and into Lake Mead, which ultimately becomes our drinking water. The way those programs work is you get a proponent, in this case, Clark County, uh, they, they developed a plan that said how many acres of wetlands they wanted to create, uh, where those acres would be, what kind of plants, um, things of that nature, how long they were going to maintain it. They developed a plan, submitted it to the Corps of Engineers and EPA and some other review agencies, had the plan approved, developed a cost estimate on what it would take to implement the plan as well as to maintain the project for a number of years and started selling credits. 
anyone who had impacts to waters of the U.S. and needed to provide mitigation bought credits. That money went into a fund that was used to implement the wetlands program. We're very fortunate to have this important resource, not only from the standpoint of what it does for our community and our natural uh, water system and, and the flushing of our water that that then reaches Lake Mead and comes back to us as, as a water supply for our community. We also have an opportunity to educate and inform families about the, the resources and about this wetland oasis and, and what it means to us as a community. And, and there's an incredible resource in this park area and I'd encourage families to go out and enjoy and celebrate the park system there. Wetlands and washes have some natural resource values depending on where you are uh, really determines what those values are. Um, they provide transportation corridors for wildlife. They can provide um, a place for water to infiltrate and recharge the groundwater, provide uh, habitat. One of the, uh, the primary um, values of the natural washes in Clark County is they serve as flood conveyances. They take the water and move through the urban areas down to the Las Vegas wash. Well, we're enhancing that function with our flood control facilities, but by doing that, um, we're also affecting other resources and we have to compensate uh, for the loss of those functions. When you think about the Las Vegas wash carrying all of the water that runs through the valley, and so that means anytime we water our lawns and if there's any fertilizer in the lawns, that'll get carried into the streets and into the wash carrying all of the oils that are residual on the streets into the wash. So anything that we can do to minimize um, that kind of exposure will be great because that will allow the water to be cleaner as it goes through. Any projects that we build that directly impact 